Whenever you move to a new country, there are some important steps or actions you should take in the first few weeks after landing in order to avoid problems with authorities early on. Germans are well known for being quite strict when it comes to following and enforcing rules, so I thought it could be quite helpful for those moving to the country to be aware of what they need to do in the first 30 days after landing in Germany. This video contains quite a lot of details that are often usually overlooked but are actually quite essential and if not followed upon, they can lead to major issues down the line. So I kindly ask for your attention for the next few minutes. Let's get started. Within two weeks of landing in Germany, you must register your address at the local registration office of the city that you are currently living in. The importance of this is to inform the relevant authorities that 1. You are currently staying somewhere in Germany and 2. You will be able to receive physical mail. Yes, for some reason, Germans are still very insistent on using physical mail in the 21st century. It is important to note that even if you have not yet found your own accommodation within the first two weeks of arrival, you still need to go and inform the relevant authorities of where in the city you are currently staying. Like in my case, when I first landed in Munich, I wasn't able to get my own accommodation in the first two weeks, but because I had booked a room in an Airbnb, I reached out to the landlord who was the Airbnb host and I asked him if I could temporarily register at his address until I was able to find my own place. And luckily for me, he agreed and I did my Anmeldung or my city registration using his address. Just be aware that not all hosts will be so kind. If you want to learn more about how to quickly find accommodation in any German city, check out the card in the top right corner that will appear right now or check the link in the description box down below. One more important thing to note is that when you go for your Anmeldung appointment with a temporary address, you need to inform the officials at the city registration office that you have been allowed to use that particular address temporarily. You need to tell them that your surname will not be on the door because you are not a long-term tenant at that address and once you find your own place, you will change addresses. This bit of information is important because after you do your initial registration, some important documents such as your tax ID number will be sent to the address that you register with. So the authorities need to know the name of the main tenant of the address that you give. That way your mail is kept in care of that particular individual and you will be able to receive these crucial documents. If you have found the content so far to be useful, I kindly ask that you leave a like and a comment on today's episode letting me know your thoughts on the video. Also, kindly sub to the channel as you can see we are close to 400 subscribers and the goal is to hit 1000 subs by the end of 2024. Your support towards this goal would be highly appreciated. Once you are able to register in the city using a temporary address, you need to aggressively begin the search for long-term accommodation. I am not going to spend much time on this topic as I have already made a 12-minute video that explains how to quickly find accommodation in any German city. So after you're done with this particular video, you can go watch that one. The only bit of information that I think is essential to add is that every time you change addresses in Germany, you need to go file a change of address with the relevant authorities. And just again, as it was with the initial city registration, it must be done within two weeks after moving houses. Music 
after you're done with step number one, you need to immediately start the process of opening a bank account, which can take weeks to complete. In a previous video, I explained how opening a bank account in Germany almost took a full month from the initial application stage to finally being able to use my card and the bank app. Different banks have different offers and requirements. So for example, the Deutsche Bank has an account specifically tailored for those under 30 years old. It's called the Junge account and it is a basic account with no monthly fees and with no minimum limit on how much money the account should receive every month. On the other hand, Commerzbank offers a different account with no monthly fees if your account receives more than 700 euro every month. My advice is that you should do research on the different types of accounts offered by various banks, learn their pros and cons, and begin the process of opening a bank account as most major transactions such as rent, utility bills, monthly health insurance charges, and even your monthly salaries will be transferred through your German bank account. As I have said before in multiple videos, next we move on to another important monthly expense and that is health insurance. First of all, you should be aware that in Germany it is illegal not to have health insurance even if you are young, fit and healthy. As you continue the process of setting up your bank account and finding accommodation, you will need to reach out to your health insurance provider so that your health insurance cover can commence. When you first move into the country, you are usually required to have travel health insurance, which covers you for a limited period of time, depending on the insurance that you took. So for example, if you took travel health insurance for 30 days, before the 30 day period lapses, you need to have transitioned into your new long-term health insurance. There are different types of health insurances available in Germany. So if you guys would like a video about it, kindly let me know in the comment section down below. But the most important thing to note is that once you sign up with a health insurance provider, you have to always pay the monthly fee. It doesn't matter whether you go eight months without getting sick, you will still need to pay for it. So it is important to do proper research before agreeing to any health insurance plan. If you're planning to stay long term in Germany, at some point you are going to most probably need to work to make ends meet. But for every cent earned in this country, you have to pay tax for it. So before starting to work for any German company, you need to have a tax ID number. Lucky for you, this step is usually kind of automatic as immediately after you do your initial city registration, within two weeks after landing into the country, the tax office is usually informed of your presence and you are immediately issued with a tax ID number which will be required by your future employers. This number will be written on a physical letter and it will be sent to you via post to the address you registered with and only after getting that number will you be able to be employed in Germany. One thing you also need to sort out as soon as possible is your transportation ticket. Last year, the German government launched the 49 euro ticket, which allows residents to use any bus, tram, train, obviously except the high speed ones, in any city in Germany for as many trips as you want. This ticket has made transportation so much more affordable as paying for weekly, daily or even per trip tickets can be way more expensive than paying for the 49 euro ticket. So for example, a weekly ticket in Munich for the M plus 3 zone costs 52 euro 70 per week. For one month that would be 210 euro 
80 cents but remember that ticket is only valid within Munich between the M and the M plus 3 zone whereas the 49 euro ticket is valid anywhere within the country. All you need to do to get this ticket is to download the Deutsche Bahn app, create a profile and then go apply for the ticket around the 24th of the current month and at the beginning of the month that you want to use the ticket from it will be ready for use. Just be aware as of the day of recording this episode the payment for the ticket is only done online through direct debit meaning you need a German bank account to complete the application. What I usually advise is that you look for a friend who you can trust and already has a bank account ask them to temporarily pay for the ticket for you and once you get your own bank account and have access to your money you can easily refund them. This may sound like a lot of work but trust me it is better to pay for the 49 euro ticket than paying more than 200 euro per month for other types of tickets or even worse risk using the public transportation system without a ticket because if you get caught you are fined 60 euro per offense and if you are caught on multiple occasions using public transport without a ticket more severe actions are usually taken. When you move to a new country, more often than not, some things are usually done in a different way compared to where you originally came from. The sooner you learn this new culture or way of life, the faster you start to adapt and the process of settling down becomes much easier. Germany is no exception to what I have just previously said. You need to educate yourself on a lot of the things that people in this country usually do. So for example, in Germany, people just don't throw away plastic bottles or metal cans into the trash or on the street because the majority of these items have a deposit on them called fund. If for example you're buying, I don't know, um, yeah we can use this as an example. If for example you're buying this kind of Red Bull right here, a 25 cent deposit is added on top of the price of the Red Bull and you only get that money back once you recycle it at any supermarket. So let's say you have collected 10 of these items, right, with this particular symbol on them. Um, this one, the one that looks like a factory. If you collect 10 items with this symbol, just know that there's a, there's a deposit that was paid for that particular item. And once you go with them to a supermarket and recycle them, you will get back about two euro fifty which will be removed from the total when you're paying for your items at the checkout. This was just one example of the many things you would need to know as soon as possible to make your first couple of months settling down in Germany as comfortable as possible. And there you have it. If you have found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comment section down below. But until next time, bye bye!